Hi there, let's just spend a few minutes looking at the key diagram for the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Well, this is how it's normally drawn. It's a non-linear curve uh, and it becomes inelastic as you head towards full capacity national output. So when there's a lot of spare capacity in the economy, aggregate supply in the Keynesian model will be highly elastic. This means that any rise in aggregate demand can be met easily by increased real output and there's not much threat of an acceleration in inflation. But the elasticity of the supply curve uh, falls as a country, as an economy moves through an economic cycle. So if, for example, we are in the boom, or rapid growth expansion phase, the amount of spare capacity goes down, unemployment's going down, the amount of firms operating at full capacity goes up. There's also the possibility of diminishing returns in production and bottlenecks start appearing in the supply of key inputs including raw materials, components and skilled labour. When aggregate supply in the Keynesian model is perfectly inelastic, an economy is assumed to be at full capacity. It's the equivalent of being on the PPF boundary. And this means that further increases in aggregate demand are purely inflationary in the short run with little extra real output. Now, growth in this model is shown by an outward shift of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, uh, leading to an increase in full capacity output. This means that if we initially have a level of AD1, the economy can be in equilibrium at Y1. Well, if you have growth of potential output shown by the shift in AS, that means you can operate with a higher level of aggregate demand consistent with a given price level. So the economy could reach an equilibrium of Y2 here, for example, without there being an unnecessarily increase in inflationary pressure. So that's how you could show economic growth alongside higher aggregate demand using a Keynesian aggregate supply curve model.